Tell them. Hey, Matt, how are you? Not too bad. I put some comments on your document um, this morning. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I just saw some notifications. Cheers. I'll um, I'll have a look at those and see if I can sort of ping some replies over. Cool. It's ba it's mostly agreeing with what you're saying and agreeing that there's <laughs> questions we need to answer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's good food for thought. Absolutely. Cool. Hello, and everyone. Hello, Diego. Hey, hi, hi, everyone. Should be getting some folks from my team shortly. One sec, let's see if I can get the last folks. So I'm going to post a few links in the chat while we wait. I'm sure a lot of you have seen these, but if not, this is the overview of this effort. The first link, the second is a component diagram for some of the things that might need to become modules. Uh, and the third link is a potential approach on the first half, excuse me, a potential first approach on some things that we want to do. So I'm hoping that those have been shared earlier. They're all on that phase two modularity channel. I think we have a critical mass to get started. Gary is kind of the last holdout and he, there he is. All right, sweet. Um, so we have everybody here. Like I said, I shared a few links. All this stuff is in the base hoop modularity channel. The purpose of this specific meeting is to kind of align ourselves around the goals, uh, language that we use when we're discussing this, some potential approaches. Uh, and Justin has kindly um, basically helped write some potential ways that we can do a first implementation. Um, but you know, I think that we need to start a little bit at the high level around around our goals. And I think that again, there's some opinions that have been put into that page that don't necessarily need to be exhaustive. Um, the way that we uh, in the consensus team have viewed the goals are around basically resolution of tech debt, better distribution of the client, and better client modification. And um, those are broken down a little bit, but the uh, the one that probably needs more explanation is client modification. We currently have the plugin API that allows for modifying a variety of different things and adding different components uh, within Besu. Um, but you know that's kind of allows for certain things that fall within the API. There's a certain specification. It doesn't necessarily touch every area of the client. Um, and you know, on the other end of that is kind of module modification, right? If we create modules within Besu and module boundaries, an inversion of control kind of approach, we can replace entire modules with other things. So if we're looking at other clients, um, if you're taking a different client's approach to storage or sync or something like that, or independent modules um, kind of in that approach, 
that's kind of what the differentiator is there. There's also the remote APIs approach where we can use things like the engine API to drive the client itself. So I encourage you guys to read those goals. I bet most of you had. Uh, are there any kind of discussion points that folks want to get into around that before we proceed? Or any other goals that weren't mentioned? Could you, Matt, sorry, could you, could we, could we talk about the middle of those two options just, just for clarity, if that's okay, just for a moment. So I, I sort of, I have a, an understanding of the plugin APIs a little, and I've written a sort of a, a dummy hello world one just to understand it a bit better. And the, the remote APIs one with the engine API, I think I have a feel for that. What, what, can you just describe a bit more about what you think the modules approach looks like on the ground? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so presumably we have, you know, functional pieces within Besu. Um, if you look at the kind of other links I shared, there's the diagrams and there's the the kind of vertical slices that Justin has called out in the other page. So you have, you know, functional areas of Besu that handle things like peer-to-peer, -peer, you know, transaction validation, um, you know, the EVM, the consensus mechanisms, all of these things are currently wired together for the most part in a kind of monolithic approach. If we were to, instead of using the plugins to kind of modify the ways that those work in Besu today, we could take an approach where we create very clean kind of module boundaries where there's expected interfaces, there's understood kind of movement of information, uh, and you have these modules that can work in theory within isolation, um, which also allows them to be swapped out for other potential modules that exist elsewhere, right, that adhere to the same interface uh, or, you know, with small modification can be made to work uh, with the other basic components. That's kind of what I'm getting at. Unless, uh, does anyone else have a characterization there that they'd like to bring up? The, the way I think about it is also that you have the entry point that is custom for project. So the entry point will glue models together. And so if you want to have a different distribution, you just create it assembling different models. Why the plugin is at the bottom, let's say it customized some kind of uh, feature, but you can't really drop any model if you do want, for example, the RPC stuff or the transaction pool, you, you need in your distribution everything. You, you can customize them. While in the, the the way I understand the module realization is that you can just create your entry point that doesn't include one module or something like that. This is my okay. My view. Yeah, I guess I I guess um, I was trying to, under, to understand which of them fell into the category of. Um, things which would start to live outside of the core Besu code base. Um, and I guess I I see like that the plugins falls into that, right? If I'm a third party and I want to build a custom plugin, then I'm going to have that code in my own repo and I'm I'm going to drop it into a, a Besu install. The remote APIs one, I think that's that's probably also the case. And I guess the modules one sounds a little more like it's more about um uh, an approach to the 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 monolithic Besu code base that makes it more modular, but still is m slightly more tended towards maintaining a lot of that code in the same sort of repo code base. Do you think that's? Uh, am I oversimplifying that last one? Do you think it, there's more scope in the modular modularization approach to have things hosted in different repos? Well this could be an option for me. I also see a mix of the two approaches. So uh, the model are independent, also developed independently. And each model could have uh, its own plugin interface and could be extended in that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want to... Distract but from the, I think yeah. a lot of things are option that we this is for discussing how to move forward. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We we don't have any 
I think, already any solution about how to reorganize uh, the work or the code. So sure. more than just moving into different repos, I think some of these stronger module boundaries um, will help uh, centralize certain code, like there's handling of the privacy precompiles um, sprinkled about the code base. And this will force us to centralize that and rationalize how it interacts with the rest of the system. Um, a little bit with the proof of work as well in some of the mining integrations. So if we require them to interact through the module, then um, we have more surety that the privacy code um, has a limited impact rather than requiring special handling. So that's the big advantage I see life um, health-wise for the code base going forward, and that kind of feeds into the tech debt. And those don't have to be done with private repos, but it makes it possible. Not private repos, but separate repos, but it makes it possible. I mean, that's a, a tangential mono repo versus multi repo debate. And um, mono repo is not going to win. It's just a question of how much you put in the main repo. Yeah, I think that helps clarify. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Any other thoughts here? I know we had some discussions of goals, like I said, internally. Is there anything that we're missing here that people think would be valuable to include or to help guide our thinking? I think. I think uh, having an expectation that this is a this is going to be an incremental effort rather than a big bang effort is is good to good to have. Otherwise, this could end up being you know a long lived massive feature branch uh, or or a forked repo in order to make this work. Do you think that needs to be mentioned as a goal, or is that really more of a vibe? Yeah, it's kind of a vibe, but I, it, I think as a goal to to frame it in the context of a goal is incrementally mergeable. Okay. I'll put that here because <laughs> we can't do it all at once. Um, no big bangs. Yep. Mm -hmm. What was the other bullet? Incremental merge no big banks. Um, that seems fine. I'm spacing. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, digestible reviews. Oh, incremental was the word I was looking for. Yeah. I think digestible reviews warrants inclusion. That's a big one. Review cycle to warrant inclusion. Okay. Um, all right. So, if, anything else on the goals here? I think we've used enough time to kind of level set. Anything else about the language as well? Are people comfortable with the way that we're discussing this? Because I want to kind of lock it in so that we can continue to discuss about it in the right context. Diego, go ahead, please. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I, 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 I'm seeing like a bit, um, overlapping between the, I mean, maybe it's something that we are going to discuss in, in this, this meeting, but about uh, plugins and modules, I see plugins, uh, something maybe more of a runtime or something that the, the core will discover. I, I don't know, maybe you see in something like SPI or something like that, uh, while modules are more something like like are the building blocks of what we are doing. I mean, the clients or the uh, PO um, proof of work client. Um, so I don't know if we are going to use both uh, concepts uh, towards the, the modularization, I mean, for, for, for the client. So how, what do you think about this? I, I think that, you know, it's, it, it's, a, it's a good distinction to bring out, right? Like, Modules are a compile time concern, plugins are a runtime concern, maybe. Um, I I think I don't want to say that they're orthogonal to each other, but I don't I think they're just different tools in the toolbox. And we probably all need to be on the same page as to like what is the rubric for making that di di division? Like 
The following three symptoms indicate this is a plugin need versus a module need. Um, so that might be something that we clarify as we more sharply define that language. Um, TLDR, I think we need both, and we're going to have to come to consensus as to when. Organizationally, it would be really nice to be able to have plugins implemented, or at least you know, organized in in a module, uh, for in, you know, in, in our sub module format. I mean, we kind of already have these 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 bounded contexts, or at least these sub projects that categorize the functionality, and our plugin API is just a single one of these sub projects, and we're going to end up with this dumping ground of, of a sub project in the plugin API if we just dump everything there. So I think that we should have, uh, I think we should you know, leverage module boundaries when we're defining these plugins. That way we can at least have them someplace where the, it's, it's not just a, a pile of code in some sub project that is com completely you know, dependency hell. Yeah, I totally agree on this because uh, looking at the protocol schedule stuff, how to extend, my my biggest concern is how, how to organize the amount of classes or data types that will be available to the plugin API. So uh, to avoid making a mess, moving everything without any uh, clear organization. So, yes, I think this is a very open question. I, I like the, the the approach of resembling more or less the the code model that we have for the plugin. Uh, maybe this could also in the modularization. Diego, did we cover your concern? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, thank you. Do we, um, let's see if we can move on to this page here. All right, uh, this was the second document that I mentioned. Um, Again, only one potential approach um, to what we could do. The components that Justin has broken down here are pretty large, right? Um, there is, as of today, we have kind of a storage module that's run through the plugins uh, for you know providing pluggable storage mechanisms, but it's used in this case for RocksDB. Um, we have no necessarily plugins for any of this stuff or specific modules for any of these other areas like sync, transaction management, uh, the EVM. The EVM is a little bit of a special case, um, and maybe we can have Dano discuss some of what that looks like in the context of this discussion. And then we have P2P and consensus, as I mentioned. Uh, these are more on the right-hand side, like components that we have that are useful in a lot of contexts. Um, and to Justin's point uh, up here somewhere, um, we don't necessarily need these to be modules, but they should be accessible in a way that the core is able to provide them to other areas of the code base. Um, On the cross-cutting concerns, I, I see like some of those things like uh, cryptography and serialization. Uh, the observability and version of control, those guys I see as uh, being used in all of the different modules, like cross-cutting concern in that way, but uh, APIs and RPC, um, and maybe to a lesser degree configuration, those, those seem like they're like meta as opposed to intra. I don't know how else to, 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 to mention that. Like uh, RPC is not usually uh, a consideration, uh, I guess in some cases is an execution. I don't know, it's, it's, RPC is a weird one for me as well. Yeah, there's a couple of, I, I think you're right. I think there's a couple of things there that don't quite fit as well as the others. Um, I 
Yeah. You know, it's imperfect. What are you going to do? Yeah. We could break out a third catalog or category, but I wouldn't know what to call it. <laughs> the the difference in cross-cutting versus business logic, do you, do you think that that would have implications for how we would modularize or I think it does. those? Yeah, I think, I think it does actually. I think a lot of those things that are cross-cutting, I think you're probably safer considering the library as being the unit of delivery um, as opposed to the business logics where you need something a little bit more sophisticated because you're going to be composing them and you know providing them to each other and building an object graph out of them, et cetera. So I, I do think that there is a um, real tangible difference in how they're implemented. Any more comments on this? And do you think they'd use the same mechanism or uh, is there a different method of extension for something that's meta as opposed to um, intra component or intra, intra module? I don't know, maybe. I mean, a lot of those things are functional. Um, you know, a lot of those things maybe don't have dependencies. Like the dependencies of a crypto library is just like bytes. Mm -hmm. You know, they're working on raws and primitives. And I think serialization is kind of like that too. Um, I think there's, there's nothing to stop you from using, you know, the same mechanism that connects all the business logic to also provide some of the cross-cutting concerns. There's nothing that would prevent you from doing that. You could totally do that. I don't see it as necessary. And if I was prioritizing the list of things that I need to modularize, those would be much lower on the list because I don't see a lot of lift there. And they're kind of fine the way that they are. And the web of dependencies that runs through them is not as problematic. Yeah. I'm just wondering if there's like, if, if we think of the, I mean, Dano, you might've been one of the original or the original uh, architects of the plugin system, um, it, it feels like there's like a, a dividing line, like a very fuzzy dividing line between what what should be um, a pluggable and modular versus something that would be like implemented as a distribution. Like there's, a, there's an alternate implementation that's leveraging portions of Besu um, and we're wrapping it up differently. Like I'm wondering if, if yeah, there's... So if, yeah, go ahead. The, the original intent of the plugin system dates back to the Pegasus days. We were looking to build value adds that we would charge for. Um, so we weren't really looking to modularize the core. We were looking to add features that might produce revenue streams. Um, so that was the foundation of and the limits of what it needed to enable. So that's why I didn't go too deep and why I didn't focus on doing hardcore modulariz modularization of the code. You think that it's, we, it could be made suitable to that? Or do you think that there's probably um, yeah okay it's it's got a startup life cycle to load things um it's just rebuilding the um the core loop to bring those components in from the plugins that'll be the tricky part i think some of that's already been done with the rocks db um that was mm -hmm. to facilitate another feature uh there's like an encrypted rocks db that somebody said they'd pay for um i don't mm -hmm. know what the ultimate outcome of that repo is but to, to substitute the storage layer with rocks db and I think I used some of it when I was experimenting with other databases. They all sucked, none of them shipped. So that's why we're still with rocks. Got it. Yeah, we've been we've been doubling down on the plugin API lately, but it's we've we've not had a, a like kind of a, a an overview of it. We've just been kind of being, being reactive to what needs to be pluggable. And it's it's kind of one off here, one off there. There's like the trilog shipping feature and uh, uh, the RPC extension feature. Um, so yeah, it, it seems like it, we're at a point where we, I think we need to have a top-down approach. I mean, if not a top-down approach, then at least a, 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 a paved path or a notion about what belongs as a plugin and what belongs as a separate distribution that's leveraging the core base of components. 
it's from what I'm gathering, the there's kind of like two ways that Gary that that's kind of being viewed, right? So there's the the we could essentially level up the plugin system, like Dano says, to incorporate a bunch of these modules at startup, and then basically turn the client modification portion of the plugin API into something else. Whereas we make kind of that the ability to you like to to replace and load and use these modules kind of as a core component of the base client, and then we basically consider the plugin API something different. Are you are you kind of following what I'm saying? Like just that modification portion, or if you need to create new modules, et cetera. Because um, if we don't go that route and we go the route, or excuse me, if we exclusively if we ignore those kind of module boundaries that were mentioned in the previous section, um, like when we're talking about privacy and POW code, I think we'll lose out on the tech debt resolution that we're looking for um, in certain instances, unless we modify the plugins to be, because it's also a lot of complexity uh, when you're, you know, if we're, we're, as we're bringing in these modules, right? Am I making much sense or am I, am I, is it hard to follow? Yeah, yeah I, th I think it makes sense. It's a, uh it's almost like a spirit of the thing like you need to have and uh make clear intent where it's like where, enshrine, enshrine plugins right like we need to find a way to make a distinction between like we're plugging together a bunch of these base modules and we still would need to find what those module boundaries are and make those interfaces clean et etc cetera, et cetera, in order to like dano said have predictable uh, testing and impact of code and all this other stuff that which were which is one of the primary reasons for doing this. Um, so I think it's I think to Diego's previous point, it's kind of a mix of the two approaches, but it would change the way that we think of the plugins today as like a means to modify the client, right? I see we got a hand up. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering, I'm, it might be a, a naive question, but um, what's the value nowadays for the plugin system as it is? I could, I could speak to that like with, with current context. Um, Basu is, is being used uh, for the Linea L2, largely because you know um, most L2s are just kind of doing their own bespoke forks of Geth, and that's that's sort of a nightmare to it's not that much of a nightmare, but it's certainly a, a pain to just be reactive to uh, a code base that doesn't want to incorporate your changes. And Besu, what we don't want to do is pollute Besu with layer two concerns that are specific to certain chains, but we also want to support that use case. So like I was saying, we're, we're, there's a, there's a trilog shipping bonsai feature that's been made into a plugin. There's um, like some specific uh, ZK EVM tracing that has been implemented as plugins. And that's really the goal is to be, to kind of support the modular blockchain use case, but still leave Besu as primarily um, a mainnet client, you know, mainnet compatible Ethereum client without turning it into this, this like nightmare of special cases, like kind of currently exists with privacy, uh, in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, it's really just kind of a, a way of keeping the code base clean and and, and uh, separating these concerns out that are usually network specific. Okay, but maybe that those could become modules eventually. I don't know. Or maybe it sounds like we were using the plugins API because that was we already had. Uh, maybe I don't know. Yeah, certainly it was there. I mean, it was something to use. Uh, and it, it allows mm -hmm. us allows us to do multi repo without having to have everything in the mono repo. Uh, I mean, it also allows some for some degree of um, I don't want to say private, but I mean uh, autonomy over what what the you you know you don't have to get something merged into main to have a specific pluggable behavior. I think that it's kind of empowering to uh, to developers who wanted to not necessarily fork Basu but use Basu on different use cases. Okay, thank you. That's just my opinion. And so I think distributions are an interesting aspect as well uh, in terms of supporting these different chains. So I, th I think that these are two approaches that we could, we could embrace both approaches 
And it's just like, when is it appropriate to do one versus the other is what's a question in my mind. From your experience with that, what, <clears throat> could the the individual consensus algorithms be implemented as plugins today from, from what you've done recently? Do you think that's feasible? So I don't think so. I'm pretty confident in that, but the engine API is a really much, I mean, it really is just a stripped down how to interact with an execution engine, right? Mm -hmm. So I am, my campaign is to kind of treat that as the entry point for consensus related things. I don't expect that to be complete, but I think it could get us to, you know, 90, 95%. So, um, you know, to, to entertain the concept though, there, there would be a lot of things that would have to be added and exposed through the plugin API to enable the consensus mechanism to be plugable. I think there's a lot more work to take that path than there is to adjust the engine API, extend or expand it and allow everything to go through through there. So I need to chop you about this tomorrow. Okay, thanks. That's useful. Cool. Yeah, so we think about this all the time. what do we think then about kind of, I, I think we're trying to do a one size fits all approach when we have a few different tools in our toolbox. The one thing that we don't necessarily have figured out is the module approach. If we're thinking about client modification at like, I think those goals are a little, um, kind of weirdly stated, but think about it this way, right? Our, one of our big goals is, is client modification in order to get the other two goals is better distribution and a reduction of tech debt, uh, hopefully via whatever we decide. So the three tools we've outlined are the, basically the engine API, the plugin API, and then this third so-called module thing, which, which we don't necessarily have a tool for. Can we discuss what it would look like to, not like a one size fits all tool, but you know, how can we potentially use all of these tools to accomplish all of what we want against these different business logic areas? And we still have kind of the, to flesh out that third one, right? We'd have to do a lot of work to define all these module interfaces, what makes sense for these abstractions, and then how do we accomplish that, right? Is it via plugins? Is it via something new? Do we modify the plugin API, uh, like I mentioned, to have like kind of a compile time modular approach or do we keep it and then we, we make the runtime modifications more like what we think of as the existing plugin api and we kind of retool how it works is there any thoughts on, on any of that i think that we we haven't really fleshed out that third notion of kind of what it would take to get to that module boundary clean interface kind of loading approach that kind of compile time approach Do we want to make module boundaries, plugin boundaries? Because I, I think that an easy way to do that would be to um, have like an interface project that uh, that way we don't end up, you know, with a a, a plugin project that has, uh, you know, this spider web of dependencies and, and a bunch of unrelated code. I mean, I don't know if we want to have module boundaries be you know, modules be plug-in boundaries. I is right. Yo, good. Yeah. But I've I think I've written a lot on the subject, so I'm gonna hold my comments to hear from others. I think you should go ahead, Justin. Maybe. Yeah, I was gonna say. Okay. <laughs> um, so when we talk about modules and things like that, you know, I'm I'm thinking of this as a software architecture problem. This is a compile time concern. And I don't think all is lost. Like I think there a lot of these divisions are already there in Basu. I think that we have a lot of those things. They just need to be updated and sharpened a little bit and maybe clarifying the interfaces and doing a little bit more thinking about that. Um, there are, you know, to, to discuss packaging, the Gradle modules, there's a lot of them and they're reasonable divisions. They might not be, you know, they might need to be updated. They might need to be rethought and, and revisited, but I think they're reasonable. Um, so I, 
I do think of this as a refactoring problem. And I think it's mostly orthogonal to either exposing the results of that through the engine API or the plugin API, or maybe X, some other thing that exposes it. But the underlying work to sharpen those interfaces is make those implementations um, less coupled uh, is, is a big, big chunk of work that we're going to work on iteratively. I have, I think, written a lot about how I think inversion of control is the approach that we need to be taking to reduce the coupling. I think um, if I was to you know, treat this as a ongoing project, a death march, if you will, I'd find a way to measure that coupling over time and make sure that it's going in the right direction and that the things that we're building become less and less coupled. Once we accomplish that, we can expose them through a plugin API or a REST API or a RPC API or whatever. It becomes, um, it becomes you know, not as big of an impact to, to move those things around and use those. So I think I am planning on you know, taking a pass at this in, in small ways where I find these problems and specifically address the coupling. Um, the document that I've been updating, which is very rough, and I am, you know, smoothing it out as I go. Um, you know, I cite a number of examples where, you know, if you want to add a metrics capability, for instance, to a deeply nested part of the code, you may have to go through and make, you know, nine, 10, 15 different classes aware of what a metric system is, just so it can pass it along to the place that it's eventually being used. So this is you know, this is a textbook inversion control problem. Um, we already use Dagger in the EVM tool. I've already introduced Dagger in very small fashion into BASU itself. And I, I think that's probably, you know, I don't want to start this whole conversation on what tool do we use, but we need something. And that's kind of there and I've started to adopt it. So I think for next steps, we're looking at find a place where BASU hurts you try to fix it using an inversion of control pattern, bring it back to everybody else, discuss the merits, strengths, weaknesses of it, and make it a small PR that we could move forward. Um, I hope that was a condensed description of the things that I've been writing and it wasn't too rambly or broad. Uh, thoughts, questions, concerns. <laughs> I think I think personally, I know I've hit that kind of scenario that you've described. The, the metrics one is a classic one <laughs> where you suddenly decide you need to uh, populate a metric from some from some new bit of the code base. And I've certainly seen that recently in, in you know, not in Besu, but I think I I think generally I buy into that approach from what you've described. Um, and and I think it's yeah, I, I'd be very interested to see how that how a sort of a first place of introducing that elsewhere would be um yeah having a look at that so how will the inversion of control mechanism dagger in this case how are we going to make that work with runtime discoverability via plugins or can we use dagger can we use that subsystem to uh to allow for runtime extensibility i don't know and yes so I okay. don't know exactly how we would go about doing that. Um, but I, I don't think there's anything about any of this that constrains us or prevents us from doing that, right? Like you can say, you can have Dagger have uh, compile time hardwired, um, you know, here's a collection of implementations that are specific to ETH Classic, and here's a different competing collection of implementations that are specific to mainnet. Um, now at runtime, choose the ones that you want a third thing to be providing, right? So you have these modules in your version. It's a service locator pattern. You can extend the service locator pattern and say, before you start choosing the services that you want to locate, <laughs> go down this runtime specified branch and now choose from those. Um, so I don't know the specifics of like how we're going to implement that. I don't really need to prescribe that at the moment though. Um, I don't see any reason why we would uh, be able to implement that with Dagger. 
Yeah, I think until we have that, though, then we will, you know, there's going to be the clash of runtime discoverability versus compile time discoverability. So I think that we, we, should, we should prioritize that, I think, is, is making sure that we know how we can use Dagger specifically, since that's our IOC of choice, um, mm -hmm. how we can do that at runtime. Mm -hmm. Let me chew on that. I don't. I don't disagree, and I don't really see any risk. I guess the only question would be like, okay, well, cool. Like, if you build the runtime mechanism first, you've got nothing to actually expose. So it's kind of like, you know, maybe it goes third. I don't know, but you know, that's kind of a scheduling implementation detail. The, 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 the notion that, well, if we can't make that choice at runtime anyway, we would want to know that sooner is compelling. Let me put it that way. What, are, what do other people think, though? Sounds like try it and see. Yeah, I would think try it and see is a good approach. Okay. Do we have a identified area that you'd like to target or we have to do a wholesale? Selfishly, uh the the interfaces that are necessary for a linear scheduler would be <laughs> timely <laughs> I, well i think you're nominating yourself in that case gary <laughs> i was nominating fabio actually <laughs> okay i think we should frankly go for something that is maximally like useful as a demonstration um if we're trying to get a collaborative effort where we get a bunch of different people working on this so that we can chip away at the different use cases, what is a single slice that would be kind of maximally useful in demonstrating that kind of approach? Do you think, Justin? Could you rephrase that? I'm not. What, 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 um, say we pick something to like to some part of the code base as an for an inversion of control pattern and you want to demonstrate like you said a small pr that shows this change if our goal is to catalyze everybody on this call and have them understand what we're talking about so that we can all go off and work on other modules yeah. i picking something that maybe touches privacy um uh, main net like multiple use cases so that we can use it as a demonstration point for this working group and come back together, talk about the goals, what we accomplished and like the, the impact on the code base, essentially. So I wouldn't do it that way because if you think of it as you're, you're, you're solving an object graph problem, breadth is the enemy. Like you actually want depth, I think. So I would actually take the opposite approach where I'd find one thing that goes deep into the code okay. and instrument it that way. You know, maybe the metrics, you know, provide metrics to something that doesn't already have it. Um, and there's an example of that in the, the document that I'm, that I'm working on. There's a, a PR that was, that was merged and you can see it. The thing that needed to be instrumented was fairly deep in the object graph. Um, and I think that if I'm imagining us implementing this incrementally, that's that's a more analogous demonstration. Like I don't think if, if we demonstrated doing it broadly and it touched a lot of things, it kind of wouldn't help us be confident that we could iterate on it in small PRs um, that we can you know keep keep getting into main and, and incrementally improving the situation. 
Um, yeah. Okay. I will not claim to choose or, you know, <laughs> do you think that that's I think a, it's, it's a more ambitious target, but I think, you know, we talked about um, maybe not making pluggable uh, proof of work, but uh, like we have enough examples of consensus mechanisms, proof of work, click IBFT, QBFT, and if the goal, if the long-term goal is to transform those into um, users of, manipulators of an engine API, um, that seems like that would be, maybe, maybe it's, it's perhaps a large first go, but at least it's well-defined and there's multiple uh, existing implementations. So it's not like we're going to be, you know, going off on a tangent somewhere with no other examples and making it too tightly, the interface is too tightly coupled. Uh -huh. Make click use the engine API. That'd be pretty dope. That would be that would be harder than proof of work, I think. You think? Yeah, just because of the you know, protocol modifications and the P2P stuff. I think that the okay. click makes. Okay. Fabio, do you have a question? Uh, not a question. It was also a suggestion about another possible things to, to see as a starting point uh, that is not big, but is used in many different places. That is uh, the, the JSON file, the parsing of the JSON file, the querying, the, the JSON file options. For example, in BESO we have uh, custom, uh, some custom uh, data that is relevant only to privacy, IBFT and so on. Uh, and this seems to be a kind of prerequisite for making also the modularizing the consensus part. Also click as its own uh, entry in the JSON uh, in the Genesis file. So from what I saw lately, uh, uh, it seems that this is not something so big like the, the, the protocol schedule, uh, seems more uh, limited and quite uh, used inside the code. Okay. About the discussions that were happening in the Discord yesterday, there was some back and forth around the protocol schedule. Yeah, that's something because I'm say, interested in uh, moving forward uh, with customizing a transaction validator block validator and the main uh, challenge that I'm finding is trying to reusing the, the current plugin API. The main challenge is how to manage the growth of the plugin API in a clean way uh, because uh, Maybe the goal at the moment is very wide. So uh, make all the protocol schedule as a plugin. It's also possible to reduce the scope and focalize, uh, put the focus on uh, transaction validator, block validator. And, uh, but all those need to be scheduled according to milestone. So some kind of, uh, mm, protocol schedule functionality need to be exposed in the plugin API. And this means that a lot of uh, interfaces, data types could be moved there, but how to do that without say creating uh, just uh, a mess of uh, different uh, 
interfaces object. Uh, this is my, because at the moment, uh, we, we, I don't think we have a, a clear uh, organization there. Maybe I'm just missing uh, the, the history. Uh, so every, usually the plugin were touching limited uh, surfaces. So it was only like, you need to move uh, some few interfaces, some data types, and this was more or less uh, simple and trivial. Uh, but if we need to move much more stuff there, uh, how to do that without, let's say, uh, as I said before, creating confusion and making it, let's say, not clean. And, this is my main point of well, uh, what I'm, I'm thinking to do is to try to, to reduce the scope following some of the uh, approach that have been shared on the, the scope channel and share uh, a proof of concept, something that we can uh, Further review and see if there are limits or, or not in that that kind in that uh, kind of approach. Then uh, I let other let's say uh, report anything that they feel is relevant for the discussion. So do, can we like just summarize uh, what we think the candidates are for uh, a path forward for, it, it sounded to me like we discussed uh, runtime, runtime discoverability via Dagger and also like a, a first candidate for, or maybe not a first and next candidate for modularization. And Justin, did you want to use the, the cast Merkel triloader as the as the example for the second I mean, thing. For the second, yes. For the second problem, yes, I yeah. do. But for the for the runtime discriminator on choosing that graph, I don't think that's appropriate, and I'm not quite sure what would be yet. So we'll probably need to keep thinking about that. Like what, what configuration option that a user can pass in at startup could choose a different implementation of an interface? I think that's the question that we need to ask and sort the answers by smallest, <laughs> narrowest, yeah. however you want to think about it, right? Yeah, currently one of those is not even a runtime option as much as it is a a directory that's scanned for additional jar files, additional code code base. I mean, we can. I mean, if if this is a proof of concept, we can always fake it. You know, yeah. we could say like, "Oh, transaction validator." All right, there's a command line option now to use transaction validator foo. Mm -hmm. um, and then we demonstrate that like, okay, um, they're all wired up correctly at compile time, but when you start providing that uh, via the service locator pattern, you get the one that the, config the configuration specified. We could contrive something, I guess. I think something we should consider adding to the, to the plugin context, right now you can register one service with one interface. I think we need to have something where you can register multiple items, like for the milestone stuff. I don't know if service is the right word, 
maybe multi-service or um, component where you can register via class that would say this, this represents a milestone definition. And then you would just add to it. So that way you could make all the ETC forks a plugin. You could make your customized um, enterprise forks a plugin. If you want to have a fork that has that custom transaction processor, that's where it would come in. So I agree that the, the protocol schedule is a great opportunity for this. Um, Bobby, I think you looked at this recently and it turned into it turned into a very broad graph to resolve um, because there were so many things. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. this is exactly my point. How to organize the plugin API around this. Uh, if we can narrow that though, Dano, I, I think that that's, you know, great. And uh, talking about uh, a transaction validator, uh, the 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 point here is that, for example, uh, you need to have a way to define a protocol schedule for that transaction validator in the in the in a plugin. So because you can't simply say at the start time use this transaction validator instead of that because the the transaction validator is linked to a milestone in a protocol schedule so as this kind of uh, life cycle uh, so in, unfortunately let's say uh, that this kind of things requires some kind of protocol schedule implementation uh, as, a, as a service uh to be to be used uh, uh, also uh, in a simple uh, proof of concept so we, we need to now on the other hand <laughs> even just the act of designing that would give you a really good menu of of things that <laughs> that you need to implement right yeah yes exactly yeah uh, for this for example the, the first dependency is that you need to to be able to understand to, to query uh, at least the 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 genesis file option into the plugin mm. because uh, the the milestone are defined there so this is a clear dependencies uh for this i say before maybe the json file the genesis file could be a, a little uh, project to start, so should require less of a full blown protocol schedule. Yes, Diego. Yeah, but I have a mother of I don't know open question here. Um, would be the, the idea to be able to I don't know override any uh, dagger module through a runtime because if that's the case i'm seeing that like a bit risky i don't know you might download a, a i don't know this distribution and out of a sudden you get a something into some directory that is slowed up in runtime and yeah. it may break things or thinking maliciously to replace the whole behavior of something is important yeah class path injection things like that yeah yep mm -hmm. I think I think yeah I think we would be very intentional and very um, careful about things that we expose like that. Yeah, cool. All right, I want to be caught in time. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm trying to think what the first approach would be, Justin, based on all these things we just said. <laughs> I think Fabio and Justin both have a uh, a candidate, a modularization candidate that they're looking at. We could, if we still have this notion of there's there's two classes of action items following this in terms of development effort, 
uh, I, research. I would, yeah, I would call this a decoupling exercise as and yeah. to just to try and convey that this is like a very small foundational thing that we're eventually going to build modularization, pluggability, remote APIs, all those other things that we want on top of that. So I would just a you know marketing point there, just to kind of it's a refactoring exercise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, we, so, so to read, sorry, go ahead, Fabio. Yes, I would like also to use this uh, starting task, starting activities to talk about how to organize the plugin API and how to move things there in a way that is clean and is uh, future proof, actually. So, just that. Gotcha. Okay. So it seems like we will nominate some folks in the consensus engineering team to work on some of these as basically an initial pass, and then we'll share the results and design of anything that we produce in another follow-on session within a couple of weeks. Um, and then we can go through it as a, as a group to discuss what was changed, lessons learned, outcomes, um, you know, where like there's probably will be a very specific PR. And then I think that at that time, it can be a good point to discuss like how we want to continue down that route. Um, so from what I'm gathering, Justin, we're building, a, we're starting with a decoupling exercise. And then when we have decoupled groupings of modules, we can decide next on how to organize uh, and continue the work against a modularity goal at that point, correct? Yeah, I think I want to just, you know, take a second to phrase it a little bit differently again. Like I I, I want, um, like a lot of people, one of the major goals that we have here is to decouple consensus specifically, right? Like that's that's what, cost, there are customers out there that want to be able to do that. They want to be able to run private networks and they want to, you know, they want to be able to iterate on that apart from what we're doing for mainnet. So I think like, Yes, I agree with like the way that you you outlined that. But I want to make sure that those people are contributing and making their voices heard as well. So like, I'm planning on kind of just writing documents in the wiki and having discussions in Discord in the modularity channel specifically. And I'm hoping that you know people that you know care about that consensus decoupling part of it are throwing out ideas, and we can start using those as some of the building blocks if we can find small enough ones, right? Like if it's like, oh yeah, you should totally redo the entire consensus mechanism. It's like, okay, well, I can't write a PR that anybody in their right mind would like, you know, <laughs> approve to do that. So um, just trying to be inclusive, just trying to be inclusive of the of the of the 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 major use case that we have, which is decoupling out the consensus. Mm -hmm. to, to add to that, I'd say I don't, I don't think we want to block on our results on you know, the consensus engineer results, like there's, there's parallel paths that could be taken. Uh, yeah. Like, the, I think the, the, the refactor of proof of work into uh, a driver of the execution engine, that's an entirely parallel uh, track that could inform and make progress on this goal at the same time without having to block on results. And it will, uh, I think it'll allow the conversation to be, you know, a decentralized conversation. Like there's more contributors rather than just we're waiting on consensus engineering to tell you how you're going to do it. Perfect. Yeah, that wasn't my intention, but it, I see how that's read. That's good. Uh, yeah, and I, like I said, we have a menu of options here and a bunch of different tools. So um, perhaps we will schedule a follow-up actual get-together in maybe three or four weeks. Um, and we can, as Justin said, in the meantime, use uh, the Discord to go through this topic and potentially even share code snippets, PRs, branches that folks can just kind of look through and see in the short term. I think anybody who has an idea to, to contribute in a, in a separate separate area or another, you know, different subject area in, in, this, in the modularity discussion, just, just pop it on the Hyperledger modularity channel and run with it, I think. Yeah. Sweet. Anything Let's else? Some interfaces. Okay, I will. Um, 
gather some notes from this uh, and share them in the wiki and on Discord. So look out for those. But yeah, I think this is a great approach. Also, check out your calendar for, um, like I said, probably three or four weeks, just so we have enough time to make progress without, uh, you know, with summer holidays in August and all the normal August stuff. <laughs> cool. All right. Thanks, everyone, for the hour today. Um, it's good to see everybody on this call. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, thanks, everyone.